Hey folks, back with another video. Let's dive into what stories got my attention today. Starting with Iraq, six Iraqi security personnel and three civilians were killed in an ambush on Saturday carried out by the Daesh group north of Baghdad, the police and the local officials have said. A police source said a roadside bomb hit a car that jihadists had opened fire on a rescue team of policemen and state-aligned paramilitary forces when they arrived at the scene about 200 kilometers from the capital. Four members of the Hashid uh, Hashid Ashabi and two policemen died along with three civilians. Muhammad Zidane, the mayor of Zoya, 50 kilometers from the city of Tikrit, told the AFP. Now, there was no immediate word of casualties among the assailants. Zidane said that those killed among the Hashed, a coalition of mainly Shia forces, were Sunni tribesmen. The mayor and police said the ambush was the work of Daesh, although there had been no immediate claim of responsibility. Daesh sleeper cells have continued to wage a hit-and-run attacks on security forces and state infrastructure, particularly in desert areas where troops are stretched thin. However, attacks with high death tolls and close to the capital have been rare. The latest attacks came as the United States announced that it would withdraw another 500 troops, reducing its deployments to 2,500 soldiers. It must be noted that most other countries that have contributing forces to the coalition have already pulled out. General Kenneth McKenzie estimated that Daesh still had around 10,000 supporters in the Iraq Syria region and remained a real threat. But US and coalition forces had to remain to help prevent Daesh from reconstituting as a cohesive group able to plot major attacks, he continued. Now, of course, it will take time for the complete end of the terrorists as we continue to fight and drain both their ideology and finances. Until then, we must be headstrong and resist. Moving on, it's, uh, France's foreign ministry has demanded Pakistan authorities to withdraw comments made by one of its ministers that alleging that President President Emmanuel Macron was treating Muslims like Nazis had treated Jews in World War II. Now, the comments posted on Twitter by Pakistan's Federal Minister for Human Rights, ironic, Shirin Mazari, on Saturday came as part of a clash between Pakistan and France over the publication of images of the Prophet Muhammad by a French magazine. The images have sparked anger and protest in the Muslim world, especially in Pakistan. I am not going to read the tweets. I find them personally very disgusting. Anyhow, in follow-up tweet on Sunday by Miss Mazari, Miss Mazari actually doubled down on her claims following a condemnation by France's foreign ministry late on Saturday. Quote, these hateful words are blatant lies imbued with an ideology of hatred and violence. Such slander is unworthy of this level of responsibility. We reject them with the greatest firmness, Foreign Ministry spokesman Agnes von der Mool said, adding that Paris had informed the Pakistan embassy of its strong condemnation of the comments. Quote, Pakistan must rectify these remarks and return to the path of a dialogue based on respect. End quote. Now, Pakistani politicians in this case have shown, both in the past and present, that they are ignorant of history and, on top of it, they refuse to see the reality as it is. I mean, poli delusional politicians are a curse for any nation, but the Muslim nations 
they have an oversupply of these kinds of politicians. These politicians, they appeal to their base. And these politicians are one of the many reasons why Muslim countries are in, these, in the kind of situation they are in. Because these politicians primarily operate under this simple, um, let's just say, I, idea of they just want power at no matter what the cost. Anyhow, moving on. Early December, it seems, is going to be a very interesting time for Indonesia. It's going to test, and there is a potential of the a conflict, let's just say, between President Joko Widodo's government and the Islamic militants, who have been emboldened by the return of, for, return of their exiled radical Islamic Defender Front leader, Rizik Shihab, who, who has been lashing out and basically threatening a so-called quote-unquote moral revolution. Now, Vidola has the Indonesian armed forces, the TNI, firmly on his side with Jakarta Regional Commander Major General Dudung Abdurrahman threatening to dissolve the FPI, FPI, the Islamic Defenders Front, if it continues to cause trouble. Quote, don't ever go against the TNI. End quote, he said. And quote, this is an order. Don't forget it. End quote. Quite, uh, he continued to uh, basically be even more harsh in his tone and very let's just say how he was very resolute and firm a member of jakarta's ethnic arab batavi community shihab is a commu is a saudi arabia educated kiai or a religiously teacher who also claims to be a habib or a descendant of the prophet muhammad now events are likely to come to a head on early December, specifically December 2nd, the anniversary of the mass demonstration organized by the conservative 212 movement <clears throat> that led to the downfall of the Chinese Christian Jakarta governor Basuki Ahok Pur Purnama, a video, a video, do, el, a video, let me try that again, a video do ally in 2016. Now police have refused to issue a permit for the, for the protest and all other mass gatherings citing concerns over the spread of the virus. Abdur Rahman said he had instructed the tearing down of posters repeating Shihab's threat of quote-unquote moral revolution and said he had also ordered he also ordered stepped up mobile patrols around the FBI Tana Abang headquarters to guard against quote unquote unwanted incidents. Quote, I will clean everything up, end quote, he said. Quote, there will be no banners calling for people to commit revolution. Don't think that he, Shihab, represents all Muslims. Not at all. There are many other Muslims who are good, end quote. Now, the violence from FBI is the sharp spearhead of the 212 coalition which has said it will only conform with the ban on mass gathering if the government postpones nationwide regional election scheduled for December 9. Now I am going to I'm going to continue to look into Indonesia and cover any news that I believe is important in this matter. From what I gathered I I think there will be at the minimum, I, I do believe there is enough to to warrant that there will be some conflict, let's just say, in early next month. Moving on into Thailand, it seems a new twist in the Thailand protest and against the, the Thai king may actually come from in Germany. 
The German the German Parliament has said that Thailand's King Maha Vijirlongkorn enjoys diplomatic immunity during his extended stays in his Bavarian villa, but the state does have the power to expel him from the country. Now, according to an assessment by the Bundestag's academic services and commissioned by the Socialist Left Party, the German state has very little power to prosecute the Thai king, despite recent threats by Foreign Minister Heiko Maas. Maas had previously warned Vigerlon Korn against ruling his country from Germany amid ongoing protest against what critics say is the king's undemocratic rule in Thailand. More than 50 people were injured in demonstrations in Bangkok this week alone, something that I have been uh, covering from time to time. Quote, we have made clear that policies that affect the country silent are not to be carried out from German soil, end quote, Ma said in early October. Now, the, king, the Thai king had returned to Thailand in October, but the left party has called on the German government to ban him from re-entering Germany. Quote, anyone who, like the king, brutally suppresses a democratic movement with a military junta should not be rewarded with a visa for luxury extended stays in Germany, end quote. Left party parliamentarian Sevim Ndagdelen and Heike Hansel said in a joint statement. Earlier in November, the German foreign ministry said it found no evidence that the king was issuing decrees from Bavaria that were violating human rights. Though opposition politicians found this less than credible considering the length of the king's stay in Germany. Now, I believe that Germany has got itself in a situation where their ideals and following the rules may have come to a some kind of a loggerhead, and this may be their way of trying to spook the monarch into voluntarily leave, leave the country. Again, I uh, will continue to let's just say look into their news and see how it progresses and then if there's anything interesting i will cover it moving on and of course finally as it is the weekend let's look into our weekend protests in belarus let's find out what happened this week it seems this the usual tens of thousands of belarus opposition protest Protesters took to the streets on Sunday, the latest large-scale rally against President Alexander Lukashenko's contested re-election. Now, around 70 demonstrators were arrested by the police, according to Vyasna Center for the Defense of Human Rights. Belarusian opposition leader Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, who has claimed victory in the, ele in the election and is now in exile in Lithuania, called Sunday's protest a step towards quote-unquote free and fair Belarus in a message of support for protesters posted on Saturday. Now before the demonstrations, a dozen metro stations were closed and the mobile network was experiencing cuts, according to an AFP journalist. About 5,000 people had gathered in the Belarus capital Friday for the funeral of an opposition activist who died from brain trauma after being arrested by police. Since the start of the protest, thousands of people have been arrested and at least four have died and dozens, uh, and dozens of others have denounced torture and violence during their detention. Of course, there are many questions and one of them in my mind is, and one of the questions that I have in my mind is, like, how long can these protests survive the winter? I mean, so far they have been resilient. I'm just wondering, will the winter, which is increasingly, which is basically as we approach December, it's obviously going to get much colder. Will the December winter be able to break the resolve of the protester? Of course, there is also the question with the thousands of people arrested, how much of that, how much of the arrest is fueling the protests versus how much of it is deterring potential protesters from joining the protests? Suppose the answer to these questions will 
be answered in the coming time but i don't know maybe months maybe years anyway that that's it for this video if you like the video then hit that like button and hit that subscribe button for future updates write in the comment sections your thoughts criticisms and anything i might have missed and i will see you in the next video